This thing's going to start right now, baby. Good timing. I'm sorry. I left my camera on from last week. I never turned it off. And so I had to, like, hard power cycle it. Or whatever you call it. So I, uh, yeah, I was a little distracted. And I was uh, was just running a little, just running a little late. Mondays are fucking tough, man. You know, I know I do this thing on Mondays, Monday morning, and, and uh, I make it hard on myself. And I think I'm running behind every week. I can't ever get out of bed. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, it looks like it's working. I can't ever get out of bed on time on Monday. <clears throat> I get to bed at a decent time Sunday night. So, you know, I, I know I got to do this. But I'm here, you know. I got it started at... Uh, I got it turned on around 8.04, it looks like, 8.03, and you know what? That's good, that's pr that's right on time in my book. So, good morning, good morning, mashed potatoes. Welcome back to the, welcome back to the live stream. Missed you the last, last week. Hey, cheers, cheers to your cup of joe, or your choice, your, uh, your morning drink of choice. Oh, it's good. Okay. Well, happy New Year's 2022. Christmas is over, New Year's is over, and now all we have are is just getting back to the getting back to normal stuff. Like this this will be the first full week of work for me and like a month well in, you know, in a couple in a few weeks the week before christmas was slow christmas was slow new year's week was slow and now we're back in business it'll be nice it'll be nice to finally get back to work so uh enough of the chit chat and enough of the bs if you uh i, I gotta i always gotta let you know if you're listening to this not on Monday, January 3rd, 2022 at 814 a.m., then you're probably listening to it on Spotify or Apple Podcasts on another day at another time. But if you want to join this episode or the future episodes live, the podcast is live on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook primarily under Caden's Podcast. And Twitch, it's under... Alpha Seltzer, A L F A S E L T Z E R, which is probably the easiest place to watch it, but that's my video game name. So uh, you could go to Caden Caden's podcast on YouTube, Caden's podcast on Facebook, and those will work just as well. Come participate in the chat with Mash Behados. He is the moderator for this for the chat for the podcast. And he also makes dumb dad jokes sometimes. So we have a really good time. I also want to share that I have started a blog. I've started a fucking blog. And I forgot to mention it last week. I was going to mention it last week, but I forgot. So let me just give you a little bit of a... Let me talk about my blog for two seconds. As you have... As I've shared before, I have been writing consistently for the last several months and it started as it start okay let me tell you a little story i was living in logan utah going to utah state like four years ago and i was driving up i was driving up out of brigham city and i was listening to a podcast with chris chris podcast and i forget what he calls it because i stopped listening to it when he uh, was accused of being a pedophile but he was talking about his experience as a stand-up comedian how he got into it and he was ex oh you know what actually you know what i believe it was i believe it was chris D'Elia on the joe rogan experience and they were talking about how they both how they both write material for their stand-up and anyway i just remember chris talking about writing every single day and explaining how it's a creative outlet for him 
and a lot of what he writes is bullshit, but every now and then something good sticks. And it's uh and uh, so I've had that in my head for years. And then this year I've had some b- big changes happen in my work where I've uh, I've taken a lot more I've taken all the responsibility for White Glove and I am trying to be responsible and put my thoughts I'm trying to organize the business the best way I can so I can operate it as myself and then eventually grow the business I'm just trying to under- I'm trying to thoroughly understand the business so since September ish I have been um I've been writing for White Glove and then when I started writing for White Glove, I decided, well, and, and a lot of that stemmed from some of the books that we've been reading about, oh, what's, uh, the E-Myth talks about having a duplicatable system, creating your business to be duplicatable, so having everything so well organized that the least experienced person can manage your business. I play with, I fidget with things on my desk the whole time I'm doing this show, by the way. So, and I, some, I've listened before to episodes and I can hear myself fidgeting and I'm so mad at myself for doing that. So I'm sorry, but I fidget. So anyway, that's where, that's where a lot of that stemmed from too. And then I decided, well, I like to be, I'm a, I like to be a, oh, I do this podcast and I, which means that I like to talk and I explore a lot of, I explore my, uh, thoughts and opinions on things so I just continued writing so now I write I was writing in my notes on my notes app every day almost every day maybe four times a week <coughs> and some days were awesome I, re- I learned that some days are awesome and you have uh, I have I'm inspired or I have these thoughts or I'm creative or I have uh, I'm well organized and I can put things down and I love what I write and then some days just kind of suck and I write down, and I'm writing, and it's just, and I'm basically writing how I don't know what to write. <laughs> but, uh, but I, I think that's, I, I love that. I've loved that aspect of writing. So here's, so here's what's changed. Over the last few months, I have been writing, and I write, I write, I write right after. I write as I come out of yoga. I do yoga Tuesday morning, Thursday morning, and. I get my ass kicked and then we meditate and when I'm meditating my thoughts your thoughts just kind of run wild and I have a bunch of thoughts come into my mind and they kind of stir and then after I'm, my meditation I'll sit down in the coffee shop by the yoga studio and I'll just and that's where I'll do my writing and I have had some awesome entries I thought that I that I thought were really inspiring or entertaining and but I was just writing to myself so I thought well how tacky is it to start a blog and now I'm a podcaster that does blogs I I mean if you had asked me what I would be doing in as a 25 year old two years ago maybe even a year ago I would not tell you well yeah I would podcasting yeah I've, I've liked podcasting the last few years but writing and blogging no never been my forte never been never been what I've done but I started writing a blog and I'm gonna just I'm gonna put it well no I'm not because no one's gonna watch the po- po- podcast but you will listen to this and I'll tell you you find my blog <coughs> On my Instagram bio and my Twitter bio, and I don't know if I put it on my Facebook bio, but the blog is Caden Kelly's blog dot wordpress dot com. K A I D E N K E L L Y S B L O G dot WordPress. D- d- is that is that clear enough? W O R D P R E S S dot com. Caden Kelly's blog dot wordpress dot com. And I, I just I post twice a week. I posted last night. Uh, I went and did yoga yesterday and and after yoga I I sat down with my girlfriend and we made goals for this twenty twenty two. And while I was making goals, I was thinking about goals and all of the books that we have read. I love that you know, I love that I just love this place that I'm in life, that I'm at in life because when I'm writing goals, I'm thinking about what all of these motherfuckers have said about writing goals. 
and the blog was awesome. So we made our goals and then we talked about the bu- the books and adjusted our goals and I think we have a, we've made a really good system. We created a really good system for this year, for 2022. So I would encourage you if you are one per- if you're a person who is trying to make goals for 2022 or set resolutions or be just to improve in any place whatever in your life, go read my last blog entry called PSA don't set goals for 2022 and again it's Kaden Kelly's blog dot wordpress dot com and I and uh, you'll find links to the podcast there I wonder how I can make the, the blog more accessible just more or more visible I need to hire a fucking marketing team just to, to advertise my shit but you know what? And I couldn't be more grateful for this. Every week, I get more downloads per episode. Every week. And I've been doing this. How long have we been doing this, Smash Potatoes? Since uh, June? I think, we, I think the first episode back in this, this series was in June. I'm going to pull up my episodes and see the first one. Show all episodes. Wow, we got to go back. Yeah. Uh, June 15th, 2021 was Monday Morning Motivation. Monday Morning Motivation. And some episodes ripped. Some episodes uh, did not rip. Um, But on average, the number is going up. And for some reason, actually, I, I don't think it's for some reason. I think I know why. The episode Atomic Habits by James Clear has bl- is blowing up a- and uh, f- t- comparative to my other episodes. But that one has almost 300 downloads, which is awesome. That's the most I've gotten on any of my podcasts, even my Mormon podcast. Uh, and my Mormon ones were getting, on average, way more than what I'm getting right now. But yeah, every every week... I'm getting more downloads. So more, I don't know if more people are listening. Well, yeah, obviously more people are listening. I think the James, the atomic habits one is so popular is because the book was a number one, was number one on Apple books for a long time. And I think it is, I think it's still the top 10 in some areas. So it's a, you know, people are searching for shit like that. And anyway, what I know I say, uh, this, uh, this, the podcast isn't for you. Mother- it's not for you, motherfuckers. It's for me. And I do it to improve myself, to be a better person, to become wiser, and to learn the mysteries of the world, to become successful, to become happier, more at peace, whatever. Whatever. I do it for myself. First and foremost, I had an awesome... Co- I had a conversation with my mom last week. She was she introduced me to Substack. After she learned about my blog, she said, "Have you learned about? have you heard about Substack? And... From what I can tell, it's basically a it's basically a one man newsletter, and you the only difference the biggest difference I think between Substack and WordPress is Substack is a subscription based platform. So I post my shit on Substack and uh, charge my readers a dollar a month to access my content. And WordPress is free. WordPress, I just put my blog out. And my mom says, you should do Substack. You can make some, why not try to make some money? And I'll tell you this, mom, I love you. And I want to make money. And I, this is what I told, this is what I told her. Of course, I would love to make money doing this. Of course, I would love to make money writing and doing a podcast and making content that inspires and uplifts people. I would love to make that my living. I want to make that my living. I can't let that be my focus because then it stops it's this stops becoming what it is to me right now. And to me right now these are building blocks to improve my life and hopefully in t- to improve your life as well. And if people want to take what I'm saying or what how I take my take my content and they want to pay for it, then awesome. But I, even then, even then, at the end of the day, the content is more important than the money. Because I can make, I make money 
doing my job, cleaning carpets. And it's not glamorous and it doesn't inspire people. It doesn't uplift people. It's just the fucking job. But uh, this is, of course, I would like to make money, but I don't. I don't want. I don't know. It's it's kind of it's kind of strange to me because I want to to make a difference in the world. I don't want to be a make a difference in the world for nine ninety nine a month kind of guy. I don't know. My my uh, my intention really is is my first intention is not to monetize me. <laughs> it's not. It can't be. I, and that's kind of how I was feeling when I started the first podcast. I thought I could do, I could post this, I could create a post Mormon community in uh, in alignment with John Delin's Mormon stories, post Mormon community, and I had, I I even contacted some other post Mormon TikToks or uh, not TikToks but podcasts and was trying to collaborate because I you know, definitely wanted to build a community, but I wanted to, I, I think my intention was to become, uh, not popular, but just, just gain a following and eventually monetize. But anyway, yeah, that's, that's, I just got to say that that's where my, that's where I'm at. I, I put, I love, I love to put out the content because of what it does for me. I spent four or five hours yesterday writing my last blog and it's an eight minute read, but I loved all of that. I loved all of the time I spent putting that together. And I'm really proud of what it, of the message. I'm really proud of how it's structured, uh, of, uh, of what it is implying, what it's supposed to teach. I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of it. And you know what? Maybe if I become a JK Rowling, fine, I'll make you buy my shit. Because I'll have because there'll be hundreds there'll be hundreds of thousands of people who want to read my shit, but that's not the case, and I don't care if that's the case. The 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 this the pot reading these books and doing the podcast does more for me right now than extra money in my pocket. Because even if the I don't know hundred two hundred three hundred people that are that will hear this or that will read my blog are paying for it, it's what kind what kind of it's extra money in my pocket, but what's the what's the point? I don't know. I, I, basically, what I'm saying is I'm going to just keep making shit. I'm just going to keep making – I'm going to keep creating. I love to create. <clears throat> it's like kind of like the musician who just wants to play music. He doesn't want to be rich. They just want to – they just want to play music. They want to get gigs. They want to uh, – they want to write music. They want to express themselves. They want to be creative, and they don't care if they're making money off of it. We need, I need to make money to live, and I do. I have a great job. <sighs> but truthfully, if one day I could, uh, I c- I'm in a position where I can quit my day job and focus on this full time, and it will support my life and it would support my uh, my family and whatever, I'd be stoked. But I'm not planning on that. I don't think that would ever happen. How many people <coughs> are <coughs> excuse me how many people are already making podcasts writing blogs reading books <laughs> and do way more and then they make Instagram posts and they make you know ever since I unfollowed everyone I know on Instagram I or on all my social media I and I only follow the inspirational people I get a bunch of, you know, after the, the <laughs> after I see, after all the posts, you know how you, oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry, let me back up. Ever since I've followed, unfollowed everyone that I know on Instagram and all the social medias, I have been, the social media algorithms have been throwing at me all of the people who are doing this, doing what I'm doing, the self, there are a bunch of other self-help people that I'm not familiar with. And some of them are famous and some of them are just like me and they have 100 followers and they just keep cranking out content. And either – I don't know what their intention is, but everyone – there are a lot of people that are doing this is what I'm saying. And yeah, you want to create a business? Well, go go fill a, go fill a market, a market gap and go be unique. Go do something that no one else is – okay, awesome. Uh, I'm not trying to create a business right now. 
this is I'm just I'm just venting about my uh, my what's going on in my brain. I'm sorry, this is a lame way to start the podcast, but yeah, I'll tell you I'll tell you that I, st- I started a blog and I'm not trying to make anyone pay for my content because I think what I'm putting out is useful and inspiring and I value uplifting others more than taking your money. So I'm not going to take your money, but maybe someday I will. Maybe someday I'll, I will make enough content where it is, uh, it's the only way I can keep going. Who knows? But right now, don't worry about it. Uh, mashed potatoes would, would be nice to have someone else in the chat. It's very lonely being your only follower. <laughs> so should I stop paying you? <laughs> yeah, you should stop. Pay- you should stop paying me. <laughs> That would be a little hypocritical. Brooke is supposed to be here. She she tells me every week she's gonna be here, and then she always sleeps in. She's so sweet. She brought me chicken pot pie last night. All right, let's move the fuck on. So go check out my blog, Caden Kelly's blog, at word uh, dot wordpress dot com. This week, last week, for the New Year's, I read the Buddha. And the Badass, The Secret Spiritual Art of Succeeding at Work by Vishen Lakiani. And I hope I I hope I uh pronounce his name right. Vishen Lakiani. A little bit about him. Vishen Lakiani, who is one handsome devil, is the founder and CEO of Mind Valley a personal growth education empire with more than 2 million students, which teaches revolutionary success systems for mastering life via online learning platforms, storytelling and filmmaking, and live events. He's the author of New York Times bestseller, The Code of the Extraordinary Mind. I think I've heard of that before, before I read this. Sounds familiar. Which has been translated to more than 20 languages. Vision is now expanding Mind Valley's presence globally, yeah, with, with the aim to bring its teachers, teachers, tech, and programs into 100 national schools, systems, and every company in the Fortune 500 within the next few years. I've never heard of Mind Valley until I read until I found this book, and I found this book just by browsing the business books in the in Apple pod, uh, Apple Books audiobooks section, the business section. So the Buddha and the and, and the title, like a good book should, the title is what got me. Uh, the Buddha and the badass are two ideas that I we've been studying for the last several months. So I loved it was a combination of how to how to inco- really to how to incorporate a uh, a Buddha mindset into your business and to still kick ass so yeah the buddha is the spiritual master and the badass is the change maker you have both inside of you once awakened they can transform the way you work live and build your empire so let's get started this book was written uh not too long ago i believe let me find the year 2020 yeah last year so it is relevant, and I liked it. I liked it. I don't know if I loved it, but I liked it. Let me get some coffee. Oh. I've been drinking just like the uh, creme brulee and the caramel cappuccino coffee pods with some creamer, and it's like drinking sugar is so good when i drink my coffee but we just got a big old pack of some pike place medium roast and it yeah uh, it that's what that tastes like coffee it tastes like a, a solid cup of coffee so it's not it doesn't taste like candy okay Yeah, I like this book. It, uh, some part, yeah, and he says in the beginning, it's not your traditional business book. This is uh, this is gonna. It's the he says the the intention of this book is to change the way we view work. Um, 
and uh, he yeah he t- he says that he's going he's he will uh, he'll introduce concepts of spirituality in your business that uh, a lot of people don't like or don't they you know people people separate their work and spiritual life he's a very spiritual person beyond his yeah so okay i i I don't think i finished my thought i never heard of mind valley until i read found this book and i googled it and it kind of just it kind of seems like ted it seems like another version of ted talks they do these they do these really big retreats and, and i did not get the full scope of the business but they do they have these conventions, 21 day long conventions where you wor- you you uh, sit through conferences with tons of brilliant people who are giving talks and lessons, giving lessons and work. There's workshops and stuff. Really cool. It's kind of it gives me the Ted vibes. Also kind of like masterclass vibes kind of seems like if Ted and masterclass had a baby, it would be mind valley so uh he be beside his mind valley business he's a he teaches meditation and he incorporates a lot of the buddhist uh philosophy in his work ethic in his business so that's where that's kind of how the book how the book goes so the purpose of this book is to change the way we we view work and it kind of goes hand in hand with the four hour work week and with do nothing where those books, their, their theme was don't work harder, work smarter. It's kind of this, it's kind of the same, kind of the same principle here. Uh, from the introduction, I took a uh, quote, he, or he quoted, he gave a quote by L.P. Jacks. It says, a master in the art of living draws no sharp distinction between his work and his play, his labor and his leisure, his mind and his body, his education and his recreation. He hardly knows which is which. He simply pursues his vision of excellence through whatever he is doing and leaves others to determine whether he is working or playing. To himself, he always appears to be doing both. So, yeah, that's a, I love that quote. From L.P. Jacks, when you love what you do for work, it's you draw no, there's no sharp distinction between your work and your play. Qualities when you tap into your inner Buddha and badass. Bliss, immunity to overwhelm, relationships, inspiration on demand, abundance, flow and ease, and bend reality. Those are the principles of each chapter that we'll talk about. Replace the lie of hard work with freedom, ease, and expansion. Ah, all right, let's get started. Part one, becoming magnetic. Go inward to attract outward. That's part one. Chapter one, uncover your soul print. Um, he told me, you know, there was, he started this chapter by saying, I'm going to read a quote. Tell me what you think this quote means. And at the end of the book, uh, I'll read it again and tell me if your response or the way you view this quote has changed. And I did that exercise and it didn't change. So I'm not even going to talk about what I said, but I'll read the quote because it's good. It's by Rumi. I don't know who Rumi is. When I run after what I think I want, my days are a furnace of stress and anxiety. If I sit in my own place of patience, what I need flows to me. And without pain. From this, I understand that what I want also wants me, is looking for me and attracting me. There is a great secret here for anyone who can grasp it. <coughs> yeah, okay. Good quote by Rumi. Uh, before you start a company or take a job, know your values. Your career should be infused with your unique set of values. I talk a ton about values. I do in my po- in my blog too. Been ri- writing a that's what the last few entries have been about is about values. But there's no greater secret to life than understanding your values and living by them. That's the tr- that's that's what it seems that seems like the the key to happiness 
is to understand your values and then just live by them instead of creating excuses not to live by them. If you value hard work or if you value if you value leisure or if you value getting hammered with your friends because of the quality, whatever, whatever you value, go do that. Don't make excuses not to do that. I value sleep and I value getting up in the morning and exercising. And that comes with sacrifices, but the but those sacrifices are worth what I value. So your career should be your career should be infused with your unique set of values. Anyone can imitate their business. Oh, your yeah. Dude, I suck at making notes. Anyone can imitate your business, but no one can imitate a business established on your own personal story. A business is built on foundational values and organizational values. <coughs> uh, then the, uh, there's an exercise. Uh, I'm not going to sh- – no, it's not worth it. Chapter 2, attract, attract your allies. More important than the how is the what and the why when it comes to your passions. A manifesto principle is portraying what your company stands for. An example of this that he gives is he talks a lot about Elon Musk because Elon Musk it does some crazy shit and he's he's uh, revolutionized a lot of he's revolutionized just recreational travel with cars but he's also putting people in space and he's also and now he's working on a company that is designed to is basically telepathy I forget what is he what does he call it Mind Link Mind Link think that's uh it's it's supposed to be this technology that can ta- you, that goes into your brain and you can talk to people with without verb without saying things mind link and he says Elon Musk has really really big goals i got to stop fucking fidgeting Elon Musk has really big goals so he yeah he says i'm going to put I'm going to put people on Mars and we're going to colonize Mars or I'm going to create a new vehicle. I'm going to create a solar powered vehicle or an all electric vehicle. That's the best, the best on the market. And the reason he says, the reason why Elon can do this is because he focuses on the what and the why to his passions and not the how he runs with his what and his why and the how he figures out the how on his way. Uh, so when you, when you, I think when you are engaging in anything or if you this year setting goals, more important than how you're going to accomplish your goals is why you want them and uh, what they are, what your goals are and why you want them. And uh, when you understand those two things, the how figures itself out. And I think that I think that rings true. I, I, I like this morning I got to the my what and my why were clear because uh, my what is going to the gym and being healthy and getting really and getting strong. And my why or that's my why. And my what is going to the gym and lifting weights. Wait a minute. Well, maybe I'm combining them. Anyway, the point is I got to the gym and I didn't know exactly what my workout was because I, I had a I thought I wrote down I had wrote. I wrote down my routine. I thought I did, and I forgot to write down Monday. So I wrote down Wednesday and Friday, and I got to the gym this morning, and I didn't have a routine. So I didn't have a how. I didn't have a how I was going to exercise. But I came, I, you know, I, I had my what and my why figured out. I was there. So I figured it out, and I had a killer workout this morning. It was awesome. So uh, more important than the how is the what and the why. All right. The only way to change someone's behavior is to either manipulate them or inspire them. Those are, that's a valuable that's a valuable piece of info to take with you whenever you're whenever you have. I think influence can be, or if you're trying to get someone quote unquote to do what you want, uh, it seems manipulative. It can seem just wrong. It seems it seems like it's that's a the wrong a bad thing to do is to get people to do what you want. But a person like Elon Musk or if you're a business owner or if you just have big ambitions, you have you have to help you have to help them see your vision. And if you need help and they agree to um uh, work with you, 
or for you, then they need to understand your vision. And and uh, so when it comes to influencing people or their behavior, you can either manipulate them, which I think is the unethical uh, version of influence, or you can inspire them. So when, yes, to get what you want, choose inspiration. Don't choose manipulation. All right. That's part, that's, uh, that's part one. Understand your why and understand your values. That's pretty much it. Attract your allies. Yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, let's move on to part two. We're going to keep this one concise, motherfuckers. I'm sorry that I, I've been going so long on the episodes the last few weeks, but I can't shut up. I don't know how to shut up. Part two, finding your power. There are four clusters of needs that everyone uh, everyone has. Happiness, love, and belonging is one. I, I called it connection. Abundance, growth, and meaning. Four clusters of needs. Connection, abundance, growth, and meaning. And that's what these chapters are going to be based on. Uh, so chapter three is spark deep connections. This is This will be the first point connection according to maslow after a person's psychological and safety needs are met what actually matters to a person is love and belonging self-esteem self-actualization and self-transcendence always being happy is not possible and counterproductive all emotions are beneficial feeling them fully is healthy so when you experience negative emotions remain positively optimistic that's the key most people miss when life gets hard. When life, and I've talked about this before, everything I've talked about, it'll just be repeated, but that's why this is, that's why this is critical. When life gets hard or when life is uncomfortable or when shit hits the fan, our tenden- uh, everyone's tendency is to seek comfort and to get rid of the discomfort. So... And that's not a bad thing. It's not bad to seek shelter when shit gets crazy. The problem is ignoring this, uh, ignoring solutions or neglecting effort to, to fix the problem. And a lot of the time when we are – a lot of I know for myself when things get hard, it's easy to distract myself with, with TV or s- with social media or video games. And just to ignore my responsibilities, it's easier to to do those things than it is to to get up early and go to the gym or to to work on your business or whatever to write to do podcasts and read books. When things are hard, it's easy to get to find distractions. But the whole point of what he's saying, what it is feeling these emotions fully, is healthy. Feeling, f- feeling express or 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 allowing the feelings of anger or frustration or depression or anxiety to come into your mind and let them stir and to think about their roots where they're coming from to meditate on those feelings is that's healthy and it's imperative to overcoming them and to finding solutions so um but his twist on it is what I think is so, so awesome. When you experience negative emotions, and I'm saying it in my own words. He probably said it way better. But when you experience negative emotions, remain positively optimistic. When you experience hard or sad things, remain positively optimistic. Don't ignore those feelings. It's health. We feel everything that we feel for a reason. Whether you believe in God or you believe in Mother Nature, whoever your creator is that gave you your emotions, gave them to you for a reason. They did not give them to you to make you suffer and uh, without, without reason. You feel pain because, some, because there's something working against you that either you need to change or that you need to endure. Or you feel anxiety because... Um, you have responsibilities that you are neglecting that 
you need to you need to pursue or that you need to engage with or you you feel sadness because you had compassion and love for somebody and either they're not with you anymore or they or or uh, <clears throat> the the relationship is you know it's changed we feel we feel all of those things for a reason so be remain positively optimistic when you have those feelings of of uh yeah bad feelings chapter 4 master unfuck with ability unfuck with ability that was i hated typing that one because it it's not a word so i could it, and i always spelt it wrong key components to becoming unfuckwithable feeling that you are enough and creating your life as a unique masterpiece this is basically self confidence uh self confidence and Well, yeah, how would you say creating your life as a, you, you, well, let's just keep going then. Exercise self-love is self-gratitude to feel that you're enough. Self-love, self-gratitude. Here he talks about means goals versus end goals. Uh, I talked about this in my blog, my last blog last night. End goals are things like peace and security and health. Means goals are are the decisions that lead you to your end goals. So consider, what experiences do I want to have in this lifetime? I should have put these, I, I forgot that I wrote this down, but this is why that I have ideas like this and I can write about them, is because someone else already wrote about them and I'm reading their words. So I should have put this in my blog, but if you've already read it and you're making goals for 2022, consider, what experiences do I want to have in this lifetime? How do I need to grow to have these experiences? And how do I get back to the world after having had... Did I say that right? How, how do I get back to the world after having had these experiences? The world? Um, I don't know. Fuck. Companies should have a vested interest in their employees' in their employees' dreams and goals if they expect them to work hard in their own company. Yeah. You can't expect your employees to... Bend over, bend over, be a little less crude. You can't expect your employees to work hard in your business if you don't work hard for them. If you don't, uh, if they don't feel like you actually, you as the boss or as the owner actually care about your employees, uh, if they don't feel like you care about them, why, why should you expect them to care about you? So it's a, that's what a, a healthy relationship is, takes effort on both ends. It works the same in business. Chapter five, make growth the ultimate goal. Success and failure are illusions. The only thing that matters is how fast you are evolving. <clears throat> Beautiful. Your work is nothing more than a vehicle to your ultimate growth. If your business becomes worth more than $1 billion, that does not matter. What matters is how did you grow? The only thing that matters is growth. This makes failure less painful and success less intoxicating. Growth equals success. The number one goal a leader uh, of a leader should be to always evolve and grow other leaders. I loved it. I love that. I love that because it be, uh, it turns an objective thing like making a million dollars a year or a billion dollars or whatever into into how did we improve as people this year or how did our business help other people or how did it improve our lives or how did it just how did our business grow and how, how do you feel as an individual success and failure are illusions the only thing that matters is how fast you are evolving and are you growing towards are you growing towards your values your end goals or are you falling away from them are your is your every decision you make bringing you closer to your end goals and your deep inner values or do they take you away from them that's the point making a million dollars is an arbitrary goal and there's benefits to having a million dollars but does having a million dollars meet your inner most needs or values and if your values is to be a selfish greedy millionaire then you know whatever that's that's the life you want to live whatever you probably don't you won't make the same kind of friends as someone who is as someone else, whatever. That's that's not the point. The point is, what are your inner values, just from what the part one talks about? And what is the why for every decision that you make? 
and does it make does it lead you towards your end goals <sighs> so the real indicator of success is not how much money you make or what your IPO is it's your uh your real indicator of success is how you've grown as an <clears throat> as an individual and in your relationships and in your with your family whatever in all of those areas how did you grow as a person so here's uh vision shares his routine for growth um sleep optimization how did i organize this maybe i didn't list everything cuz i only have two things sleep optimization and uh, the six phases of meditation, which are compassion, gratitude, forgiveness, future dreams, the perfect day, and the blessing. And I don't know what the blessing is. I'm telling you, there's a good book. It was not my favorite book, but it was a good book. I might have been distracted uh, working and uh, maybe just not as tuned into this book as I should have been. My notes, as you should know, are not a complete summary of the book. I really write down what I hear that is inspiring to me or what I think would be is important to share. And I know I don't catch everything. And what's important to me is not always what's important to the rest of the world. So I'm sure there's, t in all of the books that I've read, there's pieces of information that are missed. Sorry. But that's just the nature of this. So my notes are not perfect. They're certainly not perfect. I want to talk about sleep optimization um, a little. I think he talks about it right here, actually. So let me, let me, um, oh, wait. Yeah. I see how I, I see how I broke this down. Okay. So here's his routine for, for growth. Sleep optimization, the six phases of meditation, which are what I just read, ec optimized exercise routines, optimize eating, fasting, and supplementing, and speed reading, uh, speed learning rather, but speed reading was a, is a part of, part of that. He says under his optimized exercise routines that science shows how a few minutes of walking equals an hour on the treadmill. Uh, he, his, uh, his exercise routine is interesting. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't know if I buy that or at least I want to see what the hell he's talking about because uh I think it's just I think it's I I mean is it common sense that the the more effort you put in the more reward you're going to get? Okay, granted, if you don't do any exercise, then any exercise is good and you always see more progress in the first however long uh, how you, the first period of your consistent exercise than you do as time goes on. It becomes harder to stay fit or to see goal, to see results. It takes a lot more effort down the road. So yeah, maybe if you don't do anything, and he says how he was just kind of just getting gaining weight and didn't love it because he wasn't exercising. And he in introduced just uh, small exercises like walking and super slow strength training and how it equi equaled or it was equivalent to an hour on the treadmill. I don't know, whatever. Really, whatever is good for you. What what are your exercise end goals and what are you going to do to get there? That's, you know, again, that's the whole point. It's not about being the most fit or the strongest. It's It's about meeting your values with your exercise, meeting your values uh, in your nutrition and taking steps every day to live by those values. That's how people are. That's how you, that's how the, who, those are the happiest people on the planet. The ones that understand their values and live by them. Okay, I'll move on. Four structures to bring growth in your workplace. I don't care to read those. Respect sleep was one of them. Give morning autonomy. Give morning the autonomy. Uh, be productive in the morning before you go to work. Meditation. And an educational budget. Cool. Chapter six. Choose your mission wisely. Maslow said, self-transcendence is the highest 
form of living. And I didn't know how he defined self-transcendence. I don't know what self... So the dictionary says self-transcendence is the overcoming of the limits of the individual self and its desires in spiritual contemplation and realization. Okay. Overcoming of the limits of the individual self and the desires in spiritual contemplation and realization. That's the highest form of living, according to Maslow. Uh, Neil Donald Walsh said, Walsh said, your life is not about you. It's about all of the lives that you touch. So I said, is your business, lifestyle, influence a cancer cell or a healthy cell? This was a the, the, this cancer cell principle. This is his. I said, do we move the world forward or backward? Cancer cells don't know they are cancer. They do their job and think that what they're doing is right. You don't need to save the world, but you don't need to ruin it for the next guy. <laughs> yeah, our, uh, um, this is the, the... Let me get some coffee. Hold on. Huh? Oh, start talking and my mouth gets so dry. I don't think the coffee helps. Okay, again, your values. What do you value as a as an individual and in your community? The, uh, are you a cancer cell or are you a regular cell, a healthy cell? Think about your workplace. Does your work promote your values or does it promote your anti-values? If you don't believe in smoking, smoking cigarettes, then why do you work for Camel or Marlboro or whatever, however you say their name? Why do you work for them? Because they pay you well? Well, are you happy working in a place that goes against your values? And that can go for working at fast food restaurants. That can go for working... Uh, uh, wherever, you, uh, wherever. And I th I've thought about this as a carpet cleaner. I mean, I don't have, I don't have like strict values on, on uh, carpet cleaning, I guess. But I do have values as to what kind of products I think are appropriate to use and where the products come from. Because like, as I've talked about before, I, I think the only way to live in this hyper industrial world is by using and consuming products that are sustainable it's the only way that we're going to live continue to live as a species instead of uh, we got limit our carbon foot footprint as much as possible so the products that white glove uses i don't know if they're perfect but they're they're uh, they're some of the best on the market I just yeah, but yeah, I don't know I don't know the sustainable aspect to them. And I and you know there's the the van is a has a carbon footprint, the machine has a carbon footprint, the waste has a carbon footprint and minimizing all of that is what is what I value. And as a as the owner of White Glove, I try to I'm still working on how to minimize our carbon footprint and and ideally become carbon neutral. And uh, uh, I know there's the, one of the reasons why I love Vivo Barefoot shoes is because for every sh pair of shoe they make, they donate so much to carbon neutral companies or they plant trees to just to balance out the carbon they, they, they use to produce their shoes. They recycle, uh, they recycle their shoes. It, the, the, anyway, that's their vision. That's their that's their purpose as a company, and I think you you so you can do that for yourself. You can do that for your business. You can do that in your life with your lifestyle if it's important to you. What what again? What are your values? This is the fucking mantra that we're gonna keep repeating. What are your values? And do the decisions that you make, does the job that you have, do the people you interact with support your values, or do they take away from them? And yeah, some people don't value. They don't value. Uh, a, a sustainable ecosystem or cons a consumer world 
consumerism and they uh, they just they they just they don't think about the the car their carbon footprint because it's not important to them or maybe they just haven't put the time in to learn about it i you know i never cared until like this year and i still don't do a whole lot to uh I, you know i don't plant trees every every week to balance out my carbon footprint but i do make efforts to minimize the shopping that i do yeah, I instead of just ordering shit on Amazon, they do Amazon does like their a delivery day. And I just learned about this because I'm trying to be conscious, conscious of it. You can order all your shit for the as through the week, and then they'll just deliver all on one day to minimize trips, to minimize your carbon footprint. You can buy protein in zero waste containers. So instead of buying the big ass jugs that take up that much space in a landfill. You, you buy protein that comes in paper bags that flatten. Anyway, there's just if it's important enough to you, you can make you can incorporate it in your life. And I'm using carbon, whatever. I, I'm not going to get into it, but you get what I'm saying. Are you a cancer cell? Is is the business you work for cancer or is it healthy? Does it does it align with your values or does it detract from them? That's part two. Part three, we got three more chapters. Activate your inner visionary. A quote from Vision, a leader with a small vision will limit their entire team. That's not Elon Musk. Elon Musk's got big visions. He's got big goals, big ideas. Four tactics for envisioning. The bigger your vision, the easier it gets. Always speak of your project 10 years ahead. Give yourself permission to fail and be audacious, but not fluffy. Ah, yeah. Dream big. And, uh, yeah. Consider where you want to be in 10 years and work towards that. Chapter eight, operate as one unified brain. I thought this, I thought this chapter was lame. Uh, or not this chapter. There's some, there's maybe it was the last chapter. Implement the unified brain model to your company. Break the hierarchy and create the right beliefs and introduce UDA. Observe, orient, decide, and act. It's, it's, it's just about, uh, yeah, making deci- quick decisions for your business and being okay to fail. Failing is okay. Moving slowly is not okay. Move fast, pivot, and learn as you go. Perfectionism kills your ambition. You'll never get started if you want to be if you want to start perfect. Perfectionism kills ambition. Yeah. That's me. I'm a perfectionist. Ah, and I've learned a lot of, through doing all of this. I, I just got to show up and do the work. And when I write my my blog or when I write music from on my guitar, it's not about like writing the a, a masterpiece right off the bat. It's about just fucking going and writing. You start writing or you start playing or you start talking on the podcast. You just start. Just fucking get started. And who said uh, that most of what you write is shit? The first draft is always shit. I think an author said that. The first draft that you write is always shit. But you got to write it. You got to get started. Once you write something, you have something to work with. And you can either you can either tweak it and make it look good or you can or you'll have or you bag it and start again but you gotta start if you don't write or if you don't produce you'll never know what you can produce you'll never know what you can create if you don't start creating i mean who who made the michael who made the the stat was it michelangelo that made the statue of david i mean that wasn't the first piece of art that he ever made i'm sure and i am no art artist uh uh fanatic i don't know shit about art but i i'm certain that Da, uh, da Vinci. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say Da Vinci, and then I was gonna say DiCaprio, who's the artist that painted the the Sistine Chapel. Oh shit! Shit! Oh, I can't remember his name. Anyway, you you gotta just get started. If you have any ambition, or if you wanna, if you want to excel or 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 create or improve you got to just start and you're going to make mistakes and you got to be okay to fail failing is okay 
moving slowly is not okay. Move fast, pivot, and learn as you go. Perfectionism kills ambition. You'll never get started if you want to start perfect. Mm, Good thought. I did like that chapter, or at least I like the thought that I had. Chapter 9, last chapter. Upgrade your identity. Ah. You don't have to work harder to be successful. Sometimes the way forward is slowing down. (laughs) Oscillate between acceleration and navigation. This sounds like it goes exactly contrary to what I just said about moving slowly is not okay. Failing is okay. Moving slowly is not okay. But here's the difference. So trying something and failing is better than not trying at all or then just waiting for something to happen, moving slowly in that regard. But here he's saying you don't have to you don't have to work harder. You don't have to you don't have to kill yourself or sprint the entire time. Sometimes the best thing for you is to uh, work at a you have to work at a better pace, a smarter pace. Sometimes the way forward is slowing down. You have to oscillate between accelerating and navigating. Can you see the difference or is he contradicting himself? Because those are the notes. And if I had to choose one or the other, I would I would choose slowing down sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Just you got to be able to uh, to make quick decisions and be OK with failing. Um, but don't but do it under a reasonable time frame. You don't have to work 12 hours. You have to make mistakes 12 hours a day. Keep it. Re- keep it all reasonable. Okay, that might be contradictory to himself, but whatever. Go beyond the myth of the hustle. Understand, you are not who you think you are. You are the roles that you play in the world around you and the person that you desire to be. These are your core, this is your core identity. You are not who you think you are. You are not what you're doing right now. You are the roles that you play in the world around you and the person that you desire to be. My hair keeps poking out and it's making me self-conscious. Self-conscious. I never know which word is which. Self-conscious. Because conscience is your brain and self-conscious. Yeah, that sounds right. Mm. Ah, it's good. So... Yes, again, your values. You are the role that you play in the world, in your business, and in your relationships, and you are also the person that you desire to be. You are your values. You are your ambition. That's your core identity. States of living to optimize. States of living to optimize for a better life. Your well-being, your creativity and inspiration, your abundance and power and your love and connection. And I'll read them again because he gave sub subtopics in each. Under well-being, there is health and vitality, energy and emotional states. Under creativity and inspiration, there is flow, clarity and focus, and purpose and direction. Under abundance of power, there is wealth, no overwhelm, ease and synchronicity and under love and connection there is win-win relationships being surrounded by love from yourself and others and authenticity these are states of living that you need to optimize to live a better life well-being creativity and inspiration your abundance and power and love and connection your experience plus your identity equals your life. Your experience plus your identity. Ah, that's the book. A lot of it, uh, as I as I do this podcast, a lot of it sounds like it's about your values. It's all about values, and that was all about. That was yeah again that's all that's all I've been writing about is values because what else really matters I I I maybe I don't know if I've never thought about my values like this or if 
this is uh, a, or if this is yeah, I don't know if I've never thought about values or if this is the first time it's been brought to into that I've been thinking about it in this capacity. But when it comes to living a good life, a happy life, a successful life, getting what you think you want is not usually the key to your happiness or to your well-being. Usually getting what you think. Oh, yeah. Well, then that goes. Then I'm going to read the quote from Rumi. When I run after what I think I want, my days are a furnace of stress and anxiety. If I sit in my own place of patience, what I need flows to me and without pain. From this, I understand that what I want also wants me, is looking for me and attracting me. There's a great secret here for anyone who can grasp it. Ah, beautiful, Rumi. Beautiful. What you want, what you think you want, is not usually what you need. But if you sit in your own place of patience, if you exercise patience, self-discipline, and delayed gratification will will bring about the things that you need the most to be the happiest, the healthiest, and the and at the deepest sense of peace chasing all the money and chasing all the bitches and buying the biggest house and all the nicest cars and for some of you the nicest shoes or the nicest video game stuff and I'm a victim of this I'm not just judging I'm a victim of this uh buying all of the latest video game stuff technology the latest phone chasing what you think you need to feel happy leaves you, in, uh, as he says, uh, in a furnace of stress and anxiety. But if you exercise patience, self-discipline, and delayed gratification, what you need flows to you and without pain. And I'll, and I'll just finish the quote one more time. From this, I understand that what I want also wants me is looking for me and attracting me. There's a great secret here for anyone who can grasp it. <laughs> I'm going to end on that. Mashed potatoes. I see your I see your you just subtweeted me so hard with the video games and shoes. Well, I mean just to be fair, there is if you can go you, you can buy I buy the stuff. You can go go buy all of the stuff uh just because you enjoy it or it's your hobby and that's it's or a passion or something. But if you go after it because it's, it's like your core happiness, if you go after the nicest and newest, newest stuff, you'll never be satisfied for your happiness. But if you go after it because you enjoy it as a hobby and it doesn't relate directly to your, to your core being like your, your shoes are not your identity or your video games. I don't, I don't think maybe they are. Maybe, maybe this is a intervention for you. But I, I, you know, I buy, I buy nice shit. You've seen my video game setup. I've, I've gone back and forth so many times about buying a new truck because I have a 2006 Tacoma that is awesome and I want a new truck and I can afford a new truck. I, I, I bought wave runners because I thought how fun would it be to have wave runners? And now I'm, uh, I'm in debt again to pay off these wave runners. And after doing all of this studying, I don't need wave runners. They don't make me a better or happier person. In fact, at this point, they're just a nuisance <laughs> to have. So that's the point. That's, you know, whatever. Don't 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 you worry for a second, mashed potatoes. I just used you as an example. And you and everyone else in the sneakers group chat, because uh, that's what you guys enjoy. And you do it as a hobby, and it's a way for you to to connect with our friends. And so are video games for me, and whatever. So I'm going to read the quote one more time, and then I'm going to peace out. When I run after what I want, what I think I want, my days are a furnace of stress and anxiety. If I sit in my own place of patience, what I need flows to me and without pain. From this, I understand that what I want also wants me, 
is looking for me and attracting me. There's a great secret here for anyone who can grasp it. Understand your values. Understand why they're your values. And create a system in your life, your personal life, your relationships, your business that meets those core values. Create a system of day-to-day habits that lead you closer to your values. They bring you a deeper sense of peace or happiness and or purpose in life. And you'll live a happier life. You'll live a more fulfilled life. Don't be afraid of the hard feelings, the scary feelings. And uh, in fact, embrace them when they, when they come. Understand them. Understand where they came from and why you're experiencing them. And exercise patience, self-discipline, and delayed gratification for and what you need will flow to you. Thanks for showing up, you guys. I had a couple people in the chat or in the that showed up in the stream, but they're gone now. So whatever. Thanks for listening. If you listen to this at any time at all, I really do appreciate that you give me your precious time. It. Uh, I got a lot of comments from my last blog, the uh, Mormonism one, and I think that the I, a lot of they were all positive, and I'm so grateful that so many people have. They take time out of their life to read or listen to me. I think what I have to say can be valuable, and I think most people can apply this to improve their life. And uh, for the people that take the time out to do it, thank you. Thank you. It, it, it touches me that what I contribute, it can be beneficial for somebody else. That's why I'm going to continue to do this. So the pod- this podcast will be live on Spotify and Apple Podcasts tomorrow. Uh, under Caden's podcast and I'm going to keep writing again my blog is kadenkellysblog.wordpress.com so if you have any comments or questions for me I have my social medias right down here to uh, y- you can reach out to me Caden R. Kelly on Instagram kkelly underscore seven on Twitter I barely check Twitter um, and reach out and yeah, again, I think I, I, I'm super, super glad. I'm grateful that whatever I can contribute is in entertaining and inspirational. Hopefully, hopefully both. I don't ever want to, I don't want to be controversial anymore. <laughs> I, I think some of my blog titles are kind of conscious. It's like clickbait. I see the value in clickbait. I want people to read my shit, but, uh, you know, not because, I'm greedy. I think it's, be- but because I think it could be helpful. So check it all out, and don't worry about the shoes and the video games. Hey, I'm right there with you. I'm, 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 I'm even, I'm even, I'm in even deeper because I have two wave runners that I used twice last year. So take it easy on yourself. For the rest of you, get get the hell out there, and uh, for this year, go take some time. To reflect on your inner values. Do you value your health? Do you value your finances? Do you value peace or success? Whatever. What 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 are your values in life? What are your end goals? Where do you want to end up in life? And what are you going to do every day, every week, every month, every quarter to get closer to those end goals? What are you going to do what are you going to do each day, each hour, and each minute if you want to be so specific to uh, to be the happiest person you can be? Because I really believe the happiest people on the earth are the people who understand their values and make daily, weekly, or hourly decisions to be that person. Do you fill your time with things that bring you closer to your values or that take you away from your values? That's it. And then go do something challenging because it feels good to do some to do hard things every now and then. Go lift some heavy weights or go on a long walk or go read a long book or whatever it is for you. Go do hot yoga. I mean, these are just these are just things that I'm familiar with. Go ride your go ride your bike for a long time. Go swim some laps. I don't give a fuck. But go do something challenging. Spend some time with your family if you don't do that. 
Uh, what are your values? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's it. Thanks for showing up. We'll be here next week. Yeah, we're back on track after the holidays, uh, January 10th. So we'll have a new book and check out. I need to figure out how to make the podcast more public, but you can find the, if you forget the name, it's on my Instagram, Caden R. Kelly. It's in my bio. So that's it. That's all I'm going to say. Take it easy. Have a good one. Thank you.